All right, guys, welcome back to 243 Outdoors. My name is Josh, and this is going to be a, kind of a coffee chat slash channel update, what's going on. So uh, before we get started, I want to talk about the Reloaders Network. The Reloaders Network is a website that uh, I'm a part of. Uh, it was created by a, a YouTuber called Loads of Bacon. And what it is, there are about 34 of us content creators uh, putting our stuff on a website called the reloadersnetwork.com and uh, these uh, can be YouTube videos, they can be videos from other platforms, uh, there can be written articles and uh, this is a growing community. Uh, it's kind of early in its uh, stages or whatever. It's just been up for a month or probably two months or so but uh, it's really uh, catching on. Uh, we've got some bigger channels involved such as like uh, Fortune Cookie, Johnny's Reloading Bench, so uh, I definitely want to recommend uh, you checking that out. It's kind of a one-stop place uh, to see what's going on. And also we have a chat hosted on a website called Slack.com, and uh, we also call it the Reloaders Network, but this is where we can talk to each other. There are currently, as of tonight, 408 registered members on this, and it's just a place for shooters, casters, reloaders, anybody that has anything to do with firearms, this is the place you need to check out. Uh, it's, uh, I'll put a screenshot up here, but there's a whole list of channels on the side, and that's different topics. And uh, you click on one of those, you can ask questions, uh, there's daily conversations going on. If you have a question about a firearm-related topic, I guarantee you out of the 408 members, someone will have an answer for you, or can point you in the right direction. So that's just want to, I just want to give a quick little plug to the Reloaders Network. Be sure and check it out. It's, it, it's, uh, it's really going to be something, I think. Alright, so to get started, I want to welcome all the new subscribers and new followers on the Facebook page. Uh, the channel's grown quite a bit in the last couple of months, and uh, just introduce myself. My name is Josh. I'm located in Southern Illinois. Uh, do a little bit of long range shooting here on YouTube, do some reloading, some load development. Uh, I've done a trick shot or two in the past. Uh, I've been attempting to film a like a coyote hunt or something. I've, I've been out in several and filmed some pretty good hunts, I just never really get anything. Uh, maybe that'll pan out one of these days. Uh, this is a time of year that I don't have a whole lot going on. I shoot in the uh, basically the farmland of uh, southern Illinois and once the uh, spring planting season starts I pretty much pull my shooting for a couple months and uh, that's the uh, time period we're on right now so there's very little content coming on my channel. Last spring I kind of ended off I was uh, shooting some 223 some uh, 68 grain uh, Hornady match bullets and uh, I'd done the uh, initial load development I had a pretty good group on one and then that was when I had to quit shooting and uh, on the Utah trip I loaded up a bunch of them with my uh, the best load on that initial test so it's kind of untested and uh, I'd like to pick back up on that here one of these days also got a, a 20 MOA base I need to install on my 243, so we'll be probably doing that here in the next week or so, maybe get a video up on that. And I also want to show when I put that uh, scope back on uh, how I level a scope. I got a kind of a different way that uh, it's a little, there's not a lot of info on how I did it. There's a couple videos on YouTube, but it works very well, and I definitely want to share it with everybody. I was kind of explaining it to some people at Utah, and they were kind of interested in it, so. Uh, so while we're on the uh, subject of Utah, I realized a lot of you guys on uh, YouTube, uh, other than the videos, don't know nothing about that. Uh, on the Reloaders Network, on the chat, and uh, we I've done a live stream once with some guys, and then we've done a private live stream where I've talked about it. But uh, other than the Facebook page, you guys on YouTube probably uh, don't know much about it. So uh, tonight I'm just going to talk about that trip a little bit. So uh, early, I guess it was in January of this year, I decided to sign up for the Long Range Shooters of Utah, their uh, International Milk Jug Challenge. Uh, I've been following and kind of uh, talking back and forth with some of these guys for a couple years now. Uh, I actually submitted a video two years ago on their 1,000 uh, yard milk jug challenge. I'd done it here in my, my, uh, on my home range and I uh, got it nine shots, submitted the video, they reviewed it, everything looked good. Uh, it aired on their channel and uh, I got my 1,000 uh, yard decal. So these decals, I guess, are kind of a big deal in the shooting industry, or I guess for some people, uh, it's kind of bragging rights, I guess. So, uh, so I basically traveled across the country to try to earn some decals. So uh, this was uh, May 22nd, we took off. My dad went with me on this trip, and uh, it took a couple days to get out there. The first day, we uh, went 950 miles, stopping in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Uh, we spent the night, then we uh, wanted to go to Pikes Peak. Neither one of us had really seen the Rocky Mountains or any part of that, so uh, we drove up Pikes Peak, and uh, amazing little drive up that mountain. 
uh, I'm kind of, uh, you know, an automotive-minded guy. I kind of like watching racing, and uh, I've, I've had a past in, like, mud racing, mud bogging. Uh, I've done a little drag racing in the past, and uh, then people who race up Pikes Peak are completely insane, in my opinion. There's no guardrails. The sides are straight down. Uh, one little missed turn or a blowed tire could probably mean death, I think. But uh, it, it's a great little drive. I really enjoyed it. I liked uh, steep incline, sharp turns. Uh, just, you don't have that in Southern Illinois. We've done that. After we got done, we kind of back roaded, took some two lane highways back to the Interstate 70, and went on to Utah, uh, to Price, Utah, where we stayed. The uh, range that we shot at was North Springs Range. It's an amazing facility. Um, they was talking, it's probably the greatest gun range in the western United States, and and this is really the first public range I've been to, and, and that it, it was quite an experience. I was very impressed with it. Uh, there's a thousand yard range, steel targets all over it, about every 50 yards. There's a 600 yard range beside it with even more steel targets. There's a hundred yard range for paper. There's a paper pistol range. There's a full steel range for pistols. I mean, dueling trees, everything, anything you can imagine and want to shoot at, they had it. There was an area set up for archery, uh, where our long range for our 1200 to one mile, what they call the barn shed, there was also a place set up for uh, clay pigeons. There was a, a law enforcement facility on the property where they do their qualifying and, and do their general practicing in their own place. And then the coolest thing was the cowboy town. They had a, a full-fledged old west town for uh, cowboy action shooting. And uh, I'll, I'll throw a few pictures up here for you guys, but. We didn't shoot on that range. We uh, drove up, kind of checked it out, but uh, it, it is neat. It is really cool. Uh, around here, they have cowboy action shooting, but uh, it's nothing like that with a full town. So uh, we arrived in uh, Price on Thursday, and I wanted to do a little practicing. Uh, that was going to be the biggest deal, uh, the change of elevation for me. In uh, southern Illinois here, it's about 460 feet uh, above sea level is our elevation, and it was 6,500 feet there. So that changes saying when you run the uh, ballistic calculator, it's actually easier at those higher elevations. Uh, at 1,000 yards, you're only talking a minute or two difference, but when you're getting out to 1,500 yards to a mile, you're talking 15 to 20 minutes different on your dial. So I definitely wanted to double check my data, so uh, I done a quick zero on my rifles, then we went out to the 1,000 yard range. I dialed up 600 yards, shot a beautiful three shot group at a uh, a three shot group that measured three inches at 600 yards. I stretched it on out to a thousand, shooting at like a, a foot and a half by foot and a half plate of steel. Uh, made a minor uh, elevation adjustment, was whacking it pretty consistent. So I wrote that uh, data down and that was my thousand yards. So then we went over to the barn shed where the uh, long range is. Um, I just went right, right up for the mile. Uh, when I was shooting a mile here, my load was just a little bit slower than what I took there, but I was dialing like 94, 95 MOA to shoot a mile here, and uh, there it was like 71 or 72 minutes, and, and that was with a little bit faster round, but still, that's a huge difference. I shot oh, about five rounds or so at a mile, and it was a 36-inch piece of steel, and I was just hitting kind of all around it. I was in the vicinity, so my elevation was good. Then... Uh, I never did hit the mile plate on practice, but like I said, I was right there. The uh, next target I went up was uh, 1,200 yards. Uh, I think I dialed about a minute more than the paper was showing. I was hitting it with ease. There was a piece of steel there. Uh, I could hear the impacts on that. And then I went out to 1,500 yards. I had to do a little bit of uh, adjustment. I don't remember, it was two or three minutes more than my paper said. And I actually got an impact on steel at uh, 1,500 yards. So I had all that info wrote down for the next day for the shoot, so uh, that was a good, that was a big advantage for me. So uh, that night we had a uh, kind of a shooter's meeting at a restaurant in the town with a price called Helper. It was at the uh, Balance Rock Eatery and Pub, I believe what it was called. Uh, all the shooters and everybody that had anything to do with this met there that night. Uh, no one, we didn't really know each other, but uh, we had a great time, got to meet a lot of great people. Uh, there was actually two shooters in my group, actually, that lived very close to me. Uh, I met, we was all in the same group. Uh, we all live probably within an hour and a half of each other is what is cool. And uh, the town that I work in, one guy's wife works in that town. And uh, we started talking about people we knew. And uh, the place where I work and the place where they work, they knew people that worked there. I knew people that worked where they worked. It was kind of neat. I mean, we knew several common people more that we the more that we talked, uh, we found out, and a uh, great, great couple guys. 
So uh, we kind of went over the course of fire, what was going to happen and everything. Safety was always, you know, a topic or whatever. Uh, they have a thing called the Golden Jug. So what that is, uh, the 1,200 yard, 1,500 yard, and a mile, there's a jug, a milk jug painted gold, and it's optional, but if you want to throw $5 in it, each jug, uh, the person who would uh, hit the jug in the fewest shots win. So I signed up all three distances for the uh, milk jug, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. So the uh, next morning, I was in the uh, second group to shoot, so I needed to be there uh, pretty bright and early, about 7 o'clock or so. And uh, one thing about this range, it's completely out in the desert. There's no buildings or nothing. It's kind of like a mountain in the backdrop, kind of a canyon setting, and uh, the wind is ferocious there. It's very calm early in the morning. Seven, eight o'clock in the morning, there's almost no wind, perfectly calm conditions, and it increases as the day go, uh, goes on. Uh, probably by noon, one o'clock, you're talking 15, 20 mile an hour winds, and, and probably even 25 mile an hour winds. It, it was pretty crazy. Uh, one thing I noticed was, uh, I've never experienced this, but a triple crosswind. A, a flag at the, uh, at the barn shed where we were shooting would go one way, the mirage in your scope would go the other way, and the flag at the target would be the other way. Three different directions. The, uh, the targets were kind of on a uh, mountainside, I guess you'd call it, or a canyon wall or something. And I actually seen that flag go straight up, straight down, left, right. The wind was always changing, and uh, I've never experienced anything like that. And uh, I, I done pretty good in the wind. So uh, my first distance I shot was 1,200 yards. I dialed up the uh, dope I uh, broke down the day before. First shot on steel, second shot on steel. Third shot was just a little bit left. I uh, made a correction. My spotter told me to uh, you know hold right side and uh, got an impact on my fourth shot. So I was tickled to death. This is the first time I've ever shot with a spotter and let alone a good spotter. Uh, Michael Langsford, amazing spotter, amazing shooter. Uh, I knew who he was when I got there. I've watched his uh, videos on the Long Range Shooters of Utah. He's shooting a switch barrel 7 SOM. I don't remember the other caliber, but he cold bore hit a milk jug at a mile one shot, and then I believe it was two hours later after he hand unthreaded his barrel and put it back on, just kind of showing off four shots, hit a 2,000 yard melt jug. So this guy knows what he's doing. He spotted the entire uh, competition or challenge, whatever you want to call it. Probably 90, 95% of the uh, shooters he has spotted. Um, he also, in between rounds where they had to reset melt jugs and the backers, uh, he done just about all that. He absolutely worked his tail off that weekend. And uh, I just want to appreciate him for all his hard work. He, uh, he worked harder than anybody there. So uh, after 1,200 yards, four shots, uh, they do a little interview. Uh, they go down range. We have these uh, souvenir backers, and I'll give you guys a picture of that. If you've seen the videos at the end of the, uh, the interviews, I'm, they're holding up the backers. These are just a thin sheet metal uh, shape of Utah. And uh, the jug's in front of it, so when you hit the jug, generally the bullet goes through it. We've got stencils there that you paint. It's got their logo and got the distance on the bottom. It's a really cool. I've got them hanging up in my garage. Uh, I'll give you guys a picture of them here uh, sometime in the video. But anyway, we do the interview. We talk about the shoot, talk about our gun, our equipment. They uh, got sponsors for each event, so the, or each distance, so they talk about the sponsor a little bit. So it's kind of the experience. Everything that uh, we done is uh, filmed for YouTube on their channel. Uh, uh, there's 20 people shooting four distances. You get two attempts at each distance and 10 shots per attempt. So there is a ton of footage. There's about three cameras rolling between the uh, camera on you, the phone scope camera, and the uh, camera downrange. So it's a big task to get all these uh, videos edited. Bryce uh, does an excellent job at editing these, but it takes time. So uh, probably, you know, September, October time frame, these videos ought to start rolling out, and uh, I'll be looking forward to these. It, it'll be really cool. So after the interview, the next stage we went to was the 1,000-yard range. Um, this uh, stage was not filmed. I, I don't believe they have a sponsor for it, and generally about everybody gets 1,000 yard. It's not that difficult to uh, hit a melt jug at 1,000, although it was the hardest stage for me. Uh, it took me 10 shots. Um, it, it just seemed like no matter what I'd done, every impact was at 9 o'clock just left of the plate. And I swear about, you know, five or six of those rounds were in a group like that, just off the plate. Uh, started cheating it over, spotter, you know, giving me calls, and, you know, I'd hold a half minute over, and I'd hold a minute over, and finally I'd shot nine shots. He asked me where I'm holding, and there's a, there's a pipe post. I was on the end, and I said, I'm holding past the pipe, and, and you know, so... Uh, I gave it about two minutes, 
and the jug exploded. So it was awesome. Uh, the, the wind on that, it, it was catching it, I guess, a little bit, but uh, I don't really know what the deal was. But I got it, 10th shot, first attempt, so I was uh, tickled to death with that. So I had uh, two distances down and two to go. So after that, my next stage was 1,500 yards. Uh, by then, the wind was rip-roaring. Triple cross wind, uh, it, it, it was crazy. So uh, I dialed up my, what my paper showed that I had shot the day before, I sent the first round, spotter says, no call. So load up, I did the exact same hold again, sees the splash, you know, I don't remember, you know, a minute and a half high and a minute and a half left. I dialed down, hold over, third shot, judge draining. Absolutely amazing. Uh, tickled me to death. Uh, as you can see in the video, I was, I was quite excited about that. So the 1,200 yards was four shot, and the 1,500 yards was three shot. That was the best out of everybody there, and I won two golden jugs. Uh, one had $70 in it, and the other had $65 in it. So that was a good little bonus. Uh, I had a bunch of pictures made when I uh, got back, so that kind of paid for my pictures. I bought some picture frames and stuff. Uh, you know, just kind of helped, helped out with the trip a little bit. So done my interview for that. Uh, it, it, it just... It's a great experience. I don't know. Uh, you know, I was three for three at that point. I'm shooting a $400 rifle. There are some amazing rifles there. Uh, uh, these these shooters are the, the best in the country. I mean, if you sign up for something for this, uh, uh, you're a good shooter. You're not uh, blowing money just to go out west and you know shoot on a mountainside. You you know what you're doing. So uh, I was really pleased with how I'd done. Uh, that was all for that day. Uh, the next morning. Uh, they finished up, there was a few 1500 yard shooters that hadn't shot yet, they finished that up and then they started the mile. There was a couple people that had to catch flights, I think they had to drive back to Vegas and then they uh, had flights to catch so they let them shoot first. Conditions were pretty calm at the mile at first. One guy out of all of us did get an impact at a mile on the jug, so uh, that kind of tells you how I did there. But uh, by the time I got up, the wind was horrible as usual, and it, it was doing a lot of switching. Uh, you'd shoot two or three shots, and then you know, you'd have a right to left wind, and then it'd be left to right. Um, the wind was kind of intimidating for a lot of people, and uh, the more I thought about it, I was like, the wind's kind of canceling itself out. So, uh, first shots, you know, I'm holding just no windage, bullseye holds, and, and the first ten on my first attempt were kind of close. I never did get an impact on steel or nothing then. So the second 10 is where it gets interesting. Uh, Bryce was spotting for me on this, and I got five impacts on the steel. My backer was actually in front of a 36-inch piece of steel. I put five on steel out of 10 shots at one mile with my Ruger American 6.5 Creedmoor. That is a uh, extraordinary uh, feat. I mean, I, I can't believe it. Shooting the milk jug, you're uh, you're anticipating just busting the milk jug, and uh, when you don't, you're a little bit disappointed. But the more I thought about it, you know, I just put five shots on target at a mile with a $400 gun. This is the best shooting I've ever done, period. I mean, busting the jug or not, this is the best I've ever shot. So I rode down range with them after I shot. I wanted to see the target, take some pictures and stuff. Uh, as we're getting uh, close to the jug, I can see it's leaking, and uh, I don't get real emotional or excited, but I was about to jump off the four-wheeler, jumping up and down because I seen water coming out of this jug, and uh, people were actually looking on their uh, spotting scopes downrange at us or whatever, and they noticed I was jumping up and down and getting really excited. They actually thought I had busted it, and I thought I had too, but uh, after we looked closely at it, it was actually just a little fragment off a bounce off the steel that uh, poked it, and it was just dripping a little bit of water, and I examined the jug as good as I could, no impacts, no scrapes or nothing, so... Uh, I was literally inches away. Uh, the wind was actually blowing the jug. It was actually swinging. Uh, it realistically could have been over to the side and rounds went in because to me it looked like some of the impacts on the steel were in line with the jug. But uh, it, it was so close. But uh, it was a great experience. Uh, I met some amazing people, amazing shooters. Uh, it was well worth the drive. It was uh, like a little over 20 hours and 1,500 miles. Uh, the whole round trip was uh, 3,055 miles. So that's a long ways to go to shoot. Um, I don't know if I'll be back next year. I'll have to look into it. It was a great time. Uh, I would love to get that mile decal, and I would love the to uh, try at 2,000 yards. 
because with the elevation out there and the right conditions, my gun will do 2,000 yards, no, no question. Uh, my hand loads that I loaded for this trip were absolutely perfect. Uh, I used once fired brass. I sorted my brass into 10 round lots because we shot at uh, 10 rounds in each attempt. Uh, I weighed every projectile. I probably took 600 rounds that I weighed out to get like 100 that were perfect. So every round that I loaded for this challenge was 140.1 grains. All the powder charges were uh, double measured and uh, you know, thinking about putting five on steel at a mile, you know, in you know, like an 18 inch group, uh, the standard deviations had to be almost perfect uh, to do that. So I was well pleased with the trip. I was well pleased with how I shot. My expectations were, you know, if I got the thousand yard and 1200 yard milk jugs, I was going to be happy. And if I actually put a shot on the steel or on the backer at, at 15 in a mile, that would just be, you know, icing on the cake. But uh, to get that 1500 yards and three shots, uh, I just couldn't believe it. So I didn't do a whole lot of extra shooting. We did just a little bit on the uh, second day. I didn't film anything because the wind was just horrific there. The uh, wind and the camera would have been horrible and the fact that the wind would have probably blown the tripod over, it was that windy. Uh, we shot 243 a little bit, me and my dad did. Uh, we got up to 1,000 yards on the range with it. Uh, I took the uh, second 6.5 Creedmoor Amer Ruger American I had. We shot it a little bit, took it up to 1,000 yards. And then uh, I was really wanting to play with the 223 and shoot some of those 68 grain uh, Hornady match bullets, but the wind was just horrible and uh, it, it wasn't the right conditions, so uh, we didn't really play with it any. Uh, we stayed the night, uh, Saturday night in Price, and then headed back home Sunday morning. We ended up driving it straight through. We left Price at 9.30 a.m. Mountain Time and arrived back in Southern Illinois 7 a.m. the next morning. Uh, we stopped an hour for lunch and three times for gas, and that was pretty much all we stopped and drove it straight through. When we got back, uh, Bryce gave us all a, a discount code for the Long Range Shooters of Utah for their uh, store. So uh, I ordered a t-shirt from them, some stickers, and a decal. And uh, I got some stuff to show you here. So uh, I got this t-shirt. This is one I bought. Uh, it's kind of a black, one of those ultra soft shirts. It's got their logo. Probably kind of hard to see on the camera. But uh, Bryce actually was running short on memory cards, and I, I gave him one while I was there. And uh, he sent me some extras for that. So he sent me a, a Cytron hat, since I'm shooting a Cytron scope, so uh, real happy to get that. He had, thought I needed a Cytron t-shirt, so we have a Cytron t-shirt. And then he also sent me a uh, one of their Run Your Bolt, Not Your Mouth, Long Range Shooters of Utah t-shirts. So I want to thank Bryce for throwing those extras in there. He didn't have to do that, but uh, you know, two shirts and a hat, that's a, that's a pretty good little bonus there. So I want to thank him for that. So I want to thank every one of you guys all the subscribers all the followers i want to thank you for all your comments all your kind words uh the support that you guys had for me at this shoot is it was just amazing uh i, I don't even know how to express it uh between the uh, youtube comments on the four videos the messages on slack the uh, messages and comments on facebook the emails uh, i think I even got a couple text messages there was probably more than 250 messages I received, and I, I'm just so grateful and uh, thankful thankful to be part of this uh, shooters community. Uh, I mean, the Reloaders Network, that, that's, our, that's our group, that, that's who we are. And uh, it, I just, I still can't explain how great of a, a community this is, and, and I thank you all so much. Um, I, I don't even know what to say. So I guess I need to start wrapping this video up. This is actually the second attempt on this video. The first one went extremely long, and I was like, wow, I didn't realize how long I talked. So hopefully this one's a little bit shorter. Uh, I got a few notes here. Um, there's a guy, uh, Bryant Livingston. He was a photographer for this event, and he took like 672 photos. So in the description below, I'm going to leave a link to these photos. Uh, you can see about everybody that shot in this group. You can see most of the guns that were there. And he was just walking around taking pictures. So uh, thank him for doing that. Uh, you can view all those photos on this website. Um, I've been doing, uh, a few weeks ago, I did a live stream uh, for the Reloaders Network. And uh, I'm actually getting some uh, fiber internet to my house here. They should be hooking it up this Friday. So I'm going to be able to do uh, more live streams. I'll have a better connection. And uh, I would like to uh, maybe even host a Reloaders Network uh, live stream on my channel. So uh, I, I could see that, you know, there's a, 
you know, like 34 of us part of this group. So maybe every couple of weeks, one of us host one, pick four or five people of the group and uh, do a little live stream. So uh, I'd like to do that. Um, uh, let's see what else we got here. That's really pretty much about it. So uh, I want to thank everybody for watching. Thanks for all the new subscribers and everything. Be looking for those videos uh, from the Long Range Shooters this fall. Uh, there's going to be some amazing videos. There was a lot of uh, a lot of people got their milk jugs, and there's going to be a lot of great content coming out there. So that's going to wrap it up. I want to thank everybody for watching, and we'll see you.